What up Naughty Steppers, Connor Whitmore here again with another video for you on the Naughty Step channel and today's video is going to be another opinion piece slash discussion based one and today what I'm going to be talking about is ID culture in dubstep music or the dubstep scene. By ID I mean a track that's teased or leaked in some way prior to its release, a way in some cases of creating hype for a specific piece of music before it's put out, like in a trailer for example, or in other cases when it's discovered in a mix or a live set when it's been recorded. And the reason I'm making this video is because of a comment I got on a video last week, uh, my Spagheady Zoom live review which I shall link here, uh, and it read something like this. Yo what's up Naughty, I was wondering what you think about producers holding onto IDs or unreleased songs for too long. With this release I feel like it could have surprised me much more or had a better reaction if I hadn't heard it before in multiple DJ sets. Okay, moving on a little bit, you know what I mean. Uh, you hear so many DJs play them out and when it finally releases it doesn't feel as good. And then a comment just below that saying, this is actually an excellent question, maybe a video idea for Naughty Step. And so, here we are. Now I gave a short response to that question on the comment itself, but I thought, you know, on the back of that comment and the other one just beneath it, I thought it would be a good opportunity for me to talk extensively about this topic, you know, something that I am quite opinionated on and have quite strong feelings about. Now usually as you guys know with an opinion based video I give a couple of points for and against a particular motion uh, but this one isn't so much a question as me thinking a certain way and kind of running with it in an extensive way uh, and that's exactly what I'm going to do here. Now off the bat people may be a little confused with this video topic and any particular view that I might have against it you know, IDs and the culture surrounding that seems pretty innocent as a way of getting people hyped up for a particular piece of music before it comes out. But no, this is the exact opposite to what I think and let me tell you why. I never, ever, ever listen to EP or album trailers. I hardly ever listen to mixes or live sets. If an ID springs up in any form, I never check it out. Because once you hear something, that idea forms readily and formidably in your head and you get used to it. What you then hear when the music comes out in full is an entirely different portrayal of that idea, so you're much more likely than not to be disappointed. Not because it's worse per se, but because that's how the brain works. You become familiar with a piece of music and then the change, it unsettles you. But then you may be saying, oh Connor, but what about a trailer? That is the music how it's gonna be and it's not gonna change from there, so happy days, right? Well, no, and this leads me on to my next problem. In whatever setting, whether it's a trailer, live mix, recorded mix, whatever, the IDs are pretty much always just the drops, uh, and that's almost always the most remarkable and impactful part of a dubstep song. So from there you have this understanding of a tune in your head, centred around that standout moment, and from there you're only really bound to be let down. It's like experiencing a massive high, when you eventually hear that track in full, everything surrounding the drops has to live up to that. Whenever I do listen to a mix, however rarely, the drops almost always sound better than they do in the actual songs. Keeping up the momentum and continuous feel of that selection of songs in that high energy way. With a live show, again it's something completely fresh and new, but then again it's also in the moment and in a live environment, so the hype is potentially even more. And on trailers, the drops are given a kind of spotlight as if they're the most important part of a track, uh, when that's not always the case. It's like condensing all of the good of one particular song into one short section and saying, oh, this is what it stands for, which just isn't right. A sort of false representation, our understanding of the music is skewed in terms of how significant a part the drops play in their respective songs. And so from there, as I've mentioned briefly, we are let down when we hear the track in full. I mean, think about film trailers. You don't see the most impactful moments in them, do you? The moments upon which the enjoyment of the actual thing hinges. There's no reveal of the biggest moment because they want to save that for the actual thing, the full experience, and almost always in dubstep, that big moment is the drops. Don't get me wrong, it's a difficult one because producers want to play out their new stuff in a live show or in a mix for example, and labels want to give a little snippet of what their latest project is offering in order to build hype, all of which is completely fair. But putting it out there does unfortunately mean that people will get used to it quickly. 
So it's either you don't generate ID culture as much, or you do and you live with people complaining when it's different. Just imagine how much bigger the hype would be if there were no teasing, no ID circulation, no playing of unreleased stuff live. People would have to wait and be patient, and honestly I see that as a very good thing. You know, this is art we're talking about, it's not something that we kind of treat in a throwaway way, it deserves to be respected in that way. I love having absolutely no idea of how something's gonna sound before getting into it, like facing a blank page before getting into a new dubstep story. With other genres in bass music, I feel it isn't so much the culture to do big teaser trailers and, you know, hype up something loads before it comes out. And then with other dubstep labels, they don't have the budget to do it, and so in each instance, I feel they're better off, to be honest. Now, you may be sitting there saying, oh, but Connor, what if the end product is actually better than the ID itself? But honestly, when I first got into EDM and I was looking for all of the Skrillex, Knife Party IDs and so much more, seven or eight times out of 10, probably more, I ended up disappointed because they sounded completely different to what I'd gotten used to. And that's before mentioning all the IDs that I wanted to come out but never did and never will. It's just perpetual disappointment, and something that in my opinion just isn't worth getting invested in, completely out of our control as well, so I think we're best off just waiting for what comes out, and not speculating all that much. Which I get is unrealistic for many, but that's how I treat and consume new music, and it's definitely how I would recommend others to do so. Just providing a way of not being let down, aside from what the eventual music actually sounds like, and is easy to do with practice over time. But in giving those thoughts, I pass it off to you guys. What do you think of the prominence of ID culture in dubstep music today? I'd love to hear all of your thoughts, views, and opinions in the comments section down below. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you're yet to, and all of my social media accounts are in the description box down below. Past opinion pieces are linked here and will be in the end screen slash outro. And lastly, if it's naughty, then you know guys, so be sure, as always, to keep it naughty and stay safe. And I shall see all of you legends in the next one. Peace out.